Hello everyone and welcome to Nanaliza Done. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer. I don't know why I keep calling it that now these days when I think about it. You guys got a better idea for a general show name. I'm all ears. But we are into 3v3 because Lobster Roll is not happening this week. Crow is sick, so with a TO sick, we are going to be instead just watching 3v3 matches that aren't part of the tournament. And in fact are kind of older matches. But yeah, older replays from apparently really good 3v3 games. First one's going to be on Prestige. Have Rar Spiders with Marquees on Anthbots and Tastic on Shields. All up against Anarchid on Jumpbots, India Ray on Anthbots, and Masper on Spiders. Because Prestige is one that really favors Spiders and also gets people playing Anth because of the water, but I kind of question that. Anyhow, early scouts go on. So far, information advantage seems to be in favor of Eastern team, but it's not by a huge margin. Economically speaking, the Western team seems to be doing a bit better. Atostic having started to pick up some expansions a bit more rapidly than Masper. So the Masper going for, for what counts as a super max in this map, and they should be able to get it without any real, any real pushback. They... Got the Lotus is up, they've got their commander there, every other part of the fight is happening in the south side of the map, so it's completely out of their out of their domain. So yeah, it's they're fine, but on the other hand, Anarchid is actually Anarchid might be even doing better. Power coming up at the top should be able to get his jump back by the time it if it were to walk over there directly. Certainly he'll get his jump back now. Come back in here, forcing Atostic to retreat a little bit, holding an archer back. Although Archer versus Pyro is, is, I believe, Archer advantage. Yes, well, definitely when you consider the range. So Anarchid looking to get ready to counterattack at the same time. Nice little approach here coming up from Markeeves. Sorry, it's Markeeves holding my back, not. The... Does not matter. The point is, Markeeves is. Here to defend. And Tostic also with the Felon, so that that Pyro can't really do much. Get a little bit of scouting. If that? Could it even get that? Yes, it could. So that is about all that Anarchid can do right now with that Pyro. Worth keeping an eye on, though. It is still alive. It could still burn things. Same time, though. Redback coming up, and... Ooh, a little unfortunate that Radar Tower is... Or, and the ground also is in the way. Masper, however, they're pretty well defended. They don't have much to worry about over to the north side of the map. I mean, Marquis and Rar are trying to make that not happen, but at the same time, Anarchid forcing attention back in the base. Marquis should be able to defend this without issue. Lost a solar plant. Small loss, but still, pressure. Regardless, the map is more controlled by West. And this Pyro won't be able to do much about that. Atostic's commander doesn't quite kill it, thanks to line of sight. Oh, right, because Pyros can shoot through the ground. Yeah, people don't really realize this, but it just generally hasn't been coded in to have any kind of, like, line of sight test for fire. So it can go through solid ground. I mean, I don't know if that's an engine limitation or what, but yeah, that's how fire works. Fire does not care about, like, fire is fermionic. Okay, that's a really, that's a, that's a super obscure joke. But yeah, fire just passes through anything. Doesn't, doesn't care about solid matter at all. Oh, wait, no, I'm, fire is bosonic. I, I got the joke wrong, too. <laughs> Bosons have integer spin and therefore can pass through each other. Fermions have half integer spin and therefore get, cannot pass through each other. And that's because they occupy the same quantum state. Right, okay, sorry. Ah. I'm trying to make quantum physics jokes, and I gotta make sure I get it right. Anyway, Anarchist Commander, on the offensive, able to get that bottom mech, and so far the Eastern team is basically even. But, that's, that's saying very little when Masper is under heavy attack. Only a couple of venoms to defend, and Rar is well equipped. I mean, that one red or one recluse should be enough. The redbacks are icing on the cake. 
Actually, having broken down all the defenses, the Redbacks might as well just march right in. Same time, south side of the map, Tostig with their shield ball. Putting a lot of pressure on, and why is there a Razor? Also, I should note, this is an older version of the game. This is 1920, so the Felons are a little bit stronger than they were when we saw them in the tournament last week. Because this is from two months ago. Anyhow. That does mean Atostic does have a very strong army to work with, thanks to the Felon. Pushing back Anarchid's expansion. And this Firewalker is not going to be able to do a huge amount. I mean, burn a little bit. Actually, that might be enough. It's not much, but it's enough. I mean, stepping on the fire, definitely unwise. Opening things up, line the pirate to get in. Is that going to burn down the fire? Felon? I don't think so, but I'm not 100% sure. A lot of sources of fire have come in. No, it does! It's a close run thing, but it does indeed burn down the felon. That allows that will allow Anarchid some opening in the bottom side of the map. But more importantly, is Masters fight over the top. They are managing to hold on. They've lost the metal extractor, but at least they can hold on. Get get the reclaim back later on, and hopefully from there be able to take everything else back for them. But same time, they're not getting a whole lot of support coming in, and... Oh, sorry, never mind. Green is on that side, never mind. Actually, are getting a lot of support coming in. More importantly, there's a lot of forces coming in here from India Ray. That's forcing back RAR. That opens things up for Masper to take that north side again. And that means East Team, once again, is going to get this advantage, or should be able to get an advantage. India Ray will also be able to rebuild the metal extractors over by their base. And more importantly, heavily threaten RAR's base. I mean, these two Lotus is the only thing stopping them. The Archer should be able to take care of them without issue. And, yep, two Archers still alive. Lotus is both dead. And this factory is done. What sport forces are coming? There's a Bolt Head coming in to try to deal with it. The Archers just need to move around a little bit to avoid getting killed. And that Spider Factory is down. One factory down for the team. Many forces coming in to deal with this. Bit of a suicide mission on the part of India Ray, but... Worth it to give Masper the room to breathe. Takes out a factory as well, giving Ma Masper even more room to breathe because Rara doesn't have the defender's advantage up there. So Masper now in a great position to continue pushing through the center. I mean, that was just the fire base for Eastern team. South side of the map, though, there is... There is a dead commander, a dead Atostic commander. Eastern team gaining advantage there as well. Anarchist commander still very much alive. India Ray again with the boys... Boys, along with Anarchist Placeholder, just cleaning this entire army up. Like I said, lose the Felon and everything else just falls. Back in the north side, though, Rar going for They do have their upgraded commander. They do have a bunch of redbacks. Masper deciding discretion is the better part of Valor. Holding back, but not quite able to... I mean, not able to hold the expansion, but still able to keep their commander alive. Assuming they don't go too far forward. They have to be super careful with this. Same time, there is yet more harassment coming from India Ray. It's kind of in their MO this entire time. And it's worked out really well. I can't say I, I disagree with that idea. This problem is now we have basically double picket striker commander here. Double missile launcher with loads of extra range and radar. This is surprisingly powerful. I mean, Rar is just stuck all... I mean, this is what Rar does. This is the one thing. Killing Rar's factory is probably the least impactful factory kill of the team. It was still important, but... Yeah, Rar invests basically everything into their commander. Yeah, they always want to play Commander Wars, and this game is no exception. So as we can see, kind of an iffy situation. But then Masper does have the Red Clues. They can get rid of the Redbacks. And Rar's commander is under some threat, though I'm not really sure how much. Because again, range missile launchers. They what is their attack range right now? Like visually, what is their attack range? Okay, that's that's scary. Double check the rest of the base. We have air fighter coming in here for India Ray. <clears throat> Amph plate was has been built for Marquis, but. I'm sorry, built by Atostic. 
think that was earlier on in the game. I think I just missed that because that was explain a lot. But either way, Anarchid again under attack and not to much avail. Atostic having a very difficult time dealing with Anarchid's entire construction here. I mean, Anarchid and India are just defending the south side remarkably well. And now the center of the lake, I mean, it was being held by this Amphbot arm, or Amphbot squad, but they're out of the lake now. And they're back in the lake, because that's what lobsters do. Certainly quite the entrenched position, but it's still not the main fight. I mean, again, Anarchid has been able to just hold this territory. They're getting all the reclaim they're getting, and that's the biggest part of this map. Because this map is not a map with a lot of metal extractors, as it's fairly obvious, which are now fairly evenly split. But Reclaim is the difference maker. Okay. I'm seeing this here. I'm seeing the Lego coming in. But this is at 8,000 HP. Sorry, 6,000 HP. Plus shields. Plus Lego can't aim. You know, I'm surprised there hasn't been a Widow coming out yet. Yeah, it's Anarchid actually pointing out. They're just doing a little shot calling there. Hey, maybe build a Widow. No, Masper's not building a Widow. And it's quite, quite folks on the south side of the map, so I don't expect they're going to be building a, a spider plate in order to build a Widow themselves. But, you know, might be a bad idea, actually. That might... They get the, if they get the time or attention to do that, that would be wise. Another way, though, fire does not... Wait, fire does not put out water? I mean, water doesn't put out... No, water does put out fire. That makes sense. Thinking, how does that... How are they burning? Also, first game of the day. I guess I don't quite know how order of language works. What are they aiming at? Oh, it's just targeting the ground. Why is it targeting the ground? Why isn't it targeting Rar's commander? Masper's about to lose their entire base. This, If Masper loses the base with Rar's commander here, that might actually turn the entire game around. And yeah, I'm kind of, I kind of agree. I don't understand why there's no Widow. Or, for that matter, anything. Yeah, everyone's screaming at Masper because, I mean, to be fair, Masper is the one player that's not, like, not a top two ranks, like, purple or blue. So they're the lowest rated player in the game, but still, like, Widow! I don't know, it's like, that's sort of the thing you do. Everyone talks about Widow. Especially when you're dealing with a single heavy unit. At any rate, Tostic's factory has gone down as well. So at the very least, more damage has been dealt. So right now, Marquis is the only player that... Well, actually, Tostic has the plate. But Marquis is the only player with a solid factory available. And that is definitely quite the advantage for the Eastern team. Archer coming in to try to end that as well. Marquis' commander should be enough to defend against them, though. But that is a tough call. What the? Why did the Widow go for the red back? What the heck? Okay, get the other Widow up. Master Commander, however, is down. And Rar, I mean, okay, the Widow's gonna come in, but that's about it. Now, that ain't working at all. Rar, however, has rebuilt their factory. Boys trying to help deal with, Boys and Archer trying to help deal with it, but too many reinforcements are coming in. Putting a stop to that. And Rar's commander should be able to take out Masper's base. That Widow is never going to get built. I don't know why that Widow attacked the Redback. Oh. No, it's on hold fire. How did it attack the Redback? Unless Masper was just looking at the wrong target. Because I, I, I just didn't even pay attention because I thought, okay, it's going to nail the commander and I'll come back to it when it does. But it didn't. What the heck? Okay. Well. At any rate, let's just double check what's happening over to the south side of the map, where apparently the raids have been pushed back, and, well, Atostic hasn't rebuilt, everyone else has. But back to the to top, Masper losing their entire factory, losing their base, losing everything, really. They're going to have to be donated units to continue to rebuild. And 
Well, no scuttles as of yet. Thunderbird's coming in, though. Rar's commander does get disarmed. Wow, that was vindictive. <laughs> Thunderbird was just hovering over its head. Well, time to the placeholder as well. That should be able to take out Rar's commander completely before it gets into the ocean. And that is Rar's commander down. Completely turning that around. Finally opening this back up. That allows for us all... How much reclaim is even here? 4k reclaim. Nice. And that was Rar's main threat, though they have managed to rebuild in the meantime. Now, giant coordinated assault coming forward to the eastern base. It's... I don't know if it's a tough call. I mean, they can theoretically win. It's just that the game is just simplified. Except, you know, for this giant army of... Oh, okay, it's entirely of the of artillery. It's not... It's bulkheads... So it's not the most threatening army. I guess that's a thing. Yeah, especially when you have the Lico coming in here. That that helps. So yeah, half the bulk bulkheads go down. The remaining bulkheads are kind of forced to retreat back into the water once again. At the same time, over to the north side of the map, we have India Ray coming in with their with their archers. Runner on the back should be able to take out Marquis' base completely. I mean, Rar has rebuilt. Atostic has not. They're relying entirely on this plate. So that would be two birds, one stone if they... If if India Ray is able to take care of the factory that Marquis has that's supporting Atostic. Then that would leave Rar the only player on the team with a factory. Now it just comes down to getting a few caretakers up, as Marquis is doing right now. And building up from there. I mean, Marquise has their factory back up online. Just get the caretaker, get some reclaim. Should have enough energy to maintain that spending, so... I mean, they do, obviously. It does get shared. So, oh, all things considered, Eastern team is back on track. Western team just has a really scary army here with... Lobster... Is that lobster felons? Well, it was. Not anymore, though. And it looks like Tostic has the same idea as India Ray, but with far, far more units executing that plan. Well, Archer's coming around the back. That should be enough. That'll get rid of the Caretakers. That, that probably won't get rid of the factor rounds with the Ducks defending. The, uh, maybe. I mean, the Grizzly... No, the Grizzly's going to be up too soon. Yeah, those archers are dead. They got rid of the factory, but they did not get rid of the... Or sorry, get rid of the caretaker, but not the factory. Which is a shame. Same time, though... It's forcing a retreat on the Tostic side, or at least to regroup. Oh. And... Okay, that's that's an option to get rid of the reclaim, yeah. Set of puppies. That... Wow, is that 2,000 reclaim worth of puppies? How many puppies is that? Yeah, there are about 1,800 metal worth of puppies. Pretty much all great good in. Alright, well that that's actually really effective. I mean, assuming that they don't get hit by a single splash damage attack and die. Yeah, a bunch of puppies like that should actually work really well. You know, I got the grizzly down, most of the army down. I mean, this is... These aren't especially expensive on their own, so... Yeah, that works. And what the... Yeah, this is weird. India has had a lot of weird ground targeting problems. Not entirely sure. <laughs> King said pointed they're watching... First time watching Zero Chaos while cleaning the roof. Don't fall off. Whatever you do, don't fall off. I don't want to be responsible for your injury. Anyway, with... Oh! Masper apparently didn't know about the Widows when they were playing this, according to chat. They just didn't know Widow was a thing. That's understandable. I mean, it is a pretty situational unit. It has a lot of applications, but it isn't the... It isn't a mainline unit you just build all the time. It's... You know, it's... It's off to the side. It's... 
No, half a dozen other units to work with. Yeah, it's easy enough just to go, well, I have these, these work, I'm not going to worry about anything else. But yeah, Widows are basically anti-heavy units. They are they are amazing against Commanders, they're amazing against Striders, they're quite useful against Demi-Striders, usually the numbers are low enough that they're still effective. Against other stuff, it's kind of meh, and you do need to have a backup army, because all they do is stun the thing for 25 seconds. But, or thereabouts. But yeah, they are extremely useful. Ducks coming in, though, taking some economic damage, but not actually doing a whole lot beyond. Thunderbird. Slowing things down a bit. So, not a, not a bad run, to be honest. I mean, got rid of a caretaker, that's not nothing. But, it's still 30 metal per second being spent out here. Split by three, yeah, this should be fine. Same time, there's Anarchid with their jacks. Getting revenge here, or trying to get revenge. Ooh, the Faraday's coming in on all sides. Not ideal. Lob- oof. That wasn't... Lobstered? What the heck happened there? No, Jacks have their own jump. I... Oh, it was a Tostig that lobbed their own Jack away. That makes sense. Well, again... They tried, but man, this is remarkably effective defense. Also, yeah, Faraday's. Granted, Rars lost their factory once again, but yeah, remarkably effective defense with the Faraday's. Faraday's are scary. Like, they're really hard to hit from range, and when you get close enough, they just stun you, and you can't do anything. I mean, if you have a larger army, it's not a big deal, because one or two units get stunned and everything else goes in, but... Otherwise, yeah, it's a really tough thing to deal with. Well, at any rate, more and more we see Atostic throw units away. And Rar has been eliminated, so Eastern team maintaining their advantage and honestly growing it. The one scary bit is this army in the lake. 4k value army. Okay, most of this grizzly. Save for the Grizzly, it's close to a 2k value army. But still, Eastern Team hasn't really been able to maintain army size. They've been throwing out a lot of small units around the map to try to get raids here and there, and that's been effective, but a lot of that was puppies, which, you know, blew up. And a lot of it was jacks, which got blown up. So all things considered, Western Team does still present a pretty credible threat. I'm not really sure what they have as an option to deal with this. Part of me wants to go, just terraform it! Just go in there and terraform the whole thing. Or no, it would be raised lower, right? Oh no, it's level, yeah. They pop, pop, Just level the whole thing. Raise it up to the size of the, side of the ground, and then you're done. Get it out of the water. No more puddle! I mean, I don't know how much it would cost, but... It's fun to think about. That's a thing you can do. It is. I mean, it is sincerely a thing you can do. That's how the game works. But yeah, getting units close enough to actually do that would be. T Wait, is that? Well, I mean, hey, that's one option. Just dig them into the ground where the fat where the lobster can't get to. Them. Is there no lobster in this group? There is no lobster in this group. Oh, that is beautiful. I mean, the lobster's trying to get in the group. Aw, almost had them. Well, okay. They tried. I mean, it was useful at least as a force multiplier briefly. Damn. The lobster just saved the day, though. Weren't for that, it would have been all... They would have been lead code. They'd have been done. Like, one second later, they'd have all died. So, well played, I guess? Anyway, ground force come... Oh, right. Of course, because ducks... Do not have to surface to fire. Arch is the only thing that's going to hit underwater from this army. So, nice job dealing with the puddle. Same time, Firewalker over to the south. Anarchid looking to clean up, take care of... Well, if there's anything left of Marquis' base. Yeah, if they get rid of the chainsaw, the Lico should be able to take out Marquis' commander, Marquis' factory, everything, really. This 
whole this whole operation is going to completely collapse with this chainsaw gone, or these chainsaws gone. There's two of them. But it is absolutely the mission. Take out the chainsaws, and then everything is better. Still, though, it's proving difficult. The ducks are having a hard time actually maintaining control here. And that one archer, that one archer saving the day. Granted, the grizzly still goes down, but that one archer was making it last for far longer than I'd expected. What the heck? Oh, weird. Anyway. As it stands, there is... Not a whole lot Western teams seems to be able to do right now. Trying to rebuild, trying... Looks like... Are they trying to get archers around the back? They might be doing that again. I mean, Marquis is trying to hold the center here, but that... That chainsaw... Is burning to the ground. It is gone. Marquis' commander is not... Is not vulnerable. They were on the low ground. They weren't getting burned themselves, but still, that's one chainsaw down. I mean, this one is still a threat. That does cover a ton of space. So there's no there's no denying that that is a threat, but it's still not as bad. Just get the one. Should be fine. Marquis Commander also kind of forced to get out of there. Still, the Northern Chainsaw looks like it's not going to be hit very soon, unless... Unless Marquis goes in right now, this... Oh, not Marquis. Masper goes in right now to take out Chainsaw, which Marquis is anticipating and already ready to defend against. Yeah, they are trying, but don't necessarily want to lose all those forces to a single Faraday. Yeah, that Liko is pain in the butt. And here comes that assault once again... Has been spotted this time, though. Everybody with an urchin ready to defend with Faraday backing it up. Seems handy, if nothing else. Oof. Same time, though, Masper forced to retreat, losing a couple of red backs or recklesses to fleas. It is basically the counter. But now the chainsaw once again coming under fire. Or the northern chainsaw. Should go down soon enough. And again, once that goes down, I don't think there's any more air defense for the Western team. I think that's it. Marquis looking to change tanks, sweating, throwing a couple emissaries out, but they are just getting thrown around by the juggernaut. It is not allowed in this game. I was trying to throw in as well. Is that? Oh, West is. West is voting to resign. Mark Eves looking to take this off, and that is... Yeah, that's looking bad. Faraday's down, Chainsaw's down, the Lico can roam free. Oh, whenever it feels like it. How many Licos are there? Is that the only one? Oh, the only one's got shot down. Okay, well, the next Lico can roam free if the game would continue, but it is not, as the Eastern team has taken it. Western team throws in the towel, and that... Oh, right, it's too old. And that is that. So, yeah, Western team... Oh, I guess they never... Huh. They never actually had an army belly advantage. Kind of a local advantage, but they never really push it forward from there. Wow. Still the efficiency advantage for a while, though. That is... That was a thing. Massive efficiency advantage until quite near the end. So that's good. That still works. Uh, okay, this is a replay. There are live matches that might start in a few minutes, so I don't know how many matches are you planning on doing. Because you're doing 10 minutes, I have a... Okay, well... Eh. I guess sure. I mean, don't really see any...
good reason not to. So, yeah, we'll... We'll just do that, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a few minutes.